Breaking news, the Legina brothers have just found something that made them shudder, and the once buzzing dig ended abruptly. What terrifying mystery have they concealed? The reality they discovered might never be accepted by the world. The History Channel's popular reality series, The Curse of Oak Island, has come under fire in recent weeks following the discovery of some centuries-old indigenous artifacts, which prompted local officials to shut down a large portion of the show's dig operation, causing several archaeologists to be sent packing. Fans are already speculating as to whether the Laginas and their crew will ever experience a return to normalcy not to mention the future of Oak Island. During the final dig on the island, the Legina brothers and their crew unearthed a bizarre find leading to the closure of excavation. While the Legina brothers and metal detector specialist Gary Drayton have mostly found mud, wood, and other metal implements on the 140 acres of the purportedly cursed Oak Island, they have also found a number of rare artifacts. But what precisely are these insane discoveries they managed during the final excavation in the whimsical realm of Oak Island? There is yet another challenge for the men on the curse of Oak Island. In an effort to prevent them from digging on the island, the Canadian government intervened. Finding underground entrances to what they think is the riches was the objective, though. Regrettably, bureaucracy is getting in the way. The team discovered what could have been a hidden room next to the garden shaft. Doug engaged Dumas Contracting Limited to come in and work as excavators to dig them down and into these potential chambers. He did this by giving them a call. They think they have discovered pathways leading to a potential hidden treasure on the island. The crew was forced to wait since it would take 50 days to descend 75 feet as a result. They thought they may have just discovered a network of tunnels and chambers leading to the fabled hidden wealth. Additionally, they think one of the artifacts they discovered was of Viking provenance, which is much older than they had anticipated. But there is a new issue now. The hire of excavators, according to the Canadian government, indicates that the Legina brothers require a mining warrant. Even though they are not officially mining, red tape has once again turned the authorities against the crew searching for wealth. Not all fans, though, appeared shocked. The Canadian government wants to stop a group of well-documented gold diggers from blindly rebuilding a wooden shaft that descends to an unknowable depth on an island where six treasure hunters have already perished doing the same thing. And they're the bad guys in this situation, a fan wrote on Reddit. The Canadian government has already meddled with the Legina brothers' search for treasure on the curse of Oak Island. They stopped conducting a significant portion of the island's excavation work in 2021. The Legina brothers' crew discovered many hundred-year-old indigenous artifacts at this time. The crew found First Nation Mi'kmaq pottery fragments on the island during Season 9. Marty Legina stated in an episode at the time that they would avoid using archaeological techniques as they awaited the outcome of the situation. The only change that came as a consequence was a tightening of the show's rules. The brothers switched from conventional archaeological approaches to unconventional digging tactics at that time. This season they improved on that by mapping out places beneath the island using modern technology, allowing them to locate hints and potential entrance routes without needlessly excavating. But the excavation led to a fresh dispute with the Canadian authorities. Will obstacles keep standing in the way of the Legina brothers' search for the lost fortune on the Curse of Oak Island? Who knows? In the sixth season episode Voyage to the Bottom of the Cenote, things take a worrying turn as treasure seeker Marty Legina makes the optimistic but hasty declaration, here we are in H8, we're going to keep looking, what may possibly fail? When metal detecting specialist Gary Drayton discovers a possible top pocket discovery amid the loot, the squad has no notion of the fate that is about to befall them. Coming from the more optimistic of the two treasure hunting Legina brothers, these words have an especially ominous ring to them. In a recent episode, the action in the Money Pit area came to a similar sudden halt when someone found what could be a bone fragment. The more the Legina brothers and their team excavate, the closer they reach the legendary treasure. It's been almost a decade since they worked on unearthing the truth, but unfortunately they never reached such a great height until now. This season left them, and their fans shocked when they brought such discoveries to the audience's platter. However, Things will take to the next level in The Curse of Oak Island Season 10, Episode 25, when the new discoveries connect all the pieces together. So, are they close to locating the treasure? Well, fans are curious to learn this. And the hits keep coming. The next episode will solve another enigma. On Lot 5, Laird Niven resumes his excavation work. 
The crew will search for the secret buried beneath the triangle-shaped marsh as they move on. The team will continue digging, but they will soon get startling information that links Lot 5 to the triangle-shaped marsh. When the crew keeps digging in Money Pit, they'll also discover a remarkable discovery. They are now more prepared than ever to solve the puzzle. Marty, Craig, and Charles have been getting ready to down the 82-foot shaft for the past week. The crew didn't think there could be a tunnel underneath the shaft's terminus since one of the sides kept sinking. They chose to independently verify it despite this theory. Charles made the decision to go first and offer his services to everybody, but he had to go through specialized training first in order to achieve this. He descended and observed the garden shaft's dropping corner. After what he had seen, the group decided to dig at the bottom to see if there were any potential tunnels nearby. Marty, though, placed a hold on it. He intended to perform a self-check but needed more time to complete his dedicated training. Meanwhile, Alex, Rick, and Peter traveled to Italy to consult Umberto Musa, a specialist in coins and artifacts from antiquity. He examined the coins and found Oak Island had some ties to the Roman Empire as well. This happened as a result of one of the coins being a Roman coin. Byzantine gold coins were weighed against another coin to determine whether or not they were genuine. Laird Niven's continuing drilling on Lot 5 resulted in their most recent finding. In the meantime, Rick kept searching for answers in the area known as Nolan's Cross. But for the time being, the group keeps looking into the enigmatic circular depression in the marsh. They discover ceramic shards and charcoal fragments that they surmise may be remnants of a cooking pot or a campfire. The lead artifact that was discovered in the swamp is examined by experts in the war room. They think it is a lead cross and that it was probably made in France. This could be proof that the French had anything to do with the Oak Island Enigma. The group looked for tunnels beneath the garden shaft using a probing drill. They discovered a little quantity of wood that could be proof of a tunnel. This time, Gary Drayton uses a metal detector to check the recent spoils while the heavy equipment operator continues his work. Two substantial iron spikes that Gary immediately finds are both dated to the 1700s. If the artifacts are actually from the 18th century, the narrator speculates that Smith's Cove flood tunnel builders rather than the Truro Company, who built Shaft 5 in 1850, are more likely to have left them behind. Later that day, Marty Legina and Craig Tester participate via Skype at the War Room meeting of the Fellowship of the Dig. The crew is informed by Marty and Craig that they just met Jeremy Church, a geophysicist working for Eagle Canada's seismic exploration business, who appears in Season 6, Episodes 1 and 3. The data from the extensive seismic survey of the eastern half of Oak Island that Church and the rest of the Eagle Canada team completed back in Season 7, Episode 6 has finally been analyzed. The information points to the existence of an anomaly at a depth of around 60 feet close to the southeast corner of the cave-in pit. The anomaly significantly resembles the Smith's Cove flood tunnel since it is linear and looks to be moving toward the money pit. Remember how GPR specialists Steve Watson and Don Johnston found several subterranean anomalies close to the cave-in pit in Season 7, Episode 2? One of them was located at a depth of 82 feet and the other was located at a depth of 91 feet. Following exploratory drilling, it was discovered that four feet of sand were present between 99 and 109 feet below the surface. Remember to subscribe to the channel for more blues from the world of mysteries. Today, Oak Island is still a fascinating location where tourists may follow in the footsteps of the pioneers by exploring the money pit's depths and taking in the incredible find that permanently altered the course of history. The island serves as a reminder that there are still mysteries to be solved secrets to be revealed, and treasures hiding in the most unlikely locations. Click on the video links popping up for more interesting content and we will catch you there in a minute.